uh, this evening to uh, Doa with Pastor Carol. Uh, as the name suggests, my name is Pastor Carol. Uh, I'm a pastor of Mavuna Church. I'm also a marriage and family therapist. And um, yeah, we've been doing these uh, programs on Monday, every Monday, where we've been discussing the question of marriage and how to help, you know, couples, um, you know, just overcome some of the challenges that they have been experiencing, particularly because of the COVID season that we are currently, you know, going through. So uh, today I'm really excited uh, to have uh, with me um, in this program a very special friend. We go back many, many years. Uh, her name is Dr. Gladys Mwiti. I consider her my mentor. Actually, you know, she mentored me at one time or, or, or other in my life. And so I'm so excited that Dr. Gladys Muti can be here with us. Dr. Gladys, why don't you, you know, just um, introduce yourself and explain to us what you do. Yeah, thank you, Carol. Good, uh, good evening or whatever, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Gladys Muti, and um, I am a consulting clinical psychologist and trauma expert. Uh, founder and CEO of Oasis Africa, Center for Transformational Psychology and Trauma. So that's what I do on a full-time basis. I have a team of about 15 psychologists who work with me, all masters and doctoral level. And so we service, um, we offer services to individuals who call and see us on various life challenges. And by the way, we are not psychiatrists. People confuse yeah. psychiatry and, and psychology. psychology. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> psychiatrists work with people that are chronically mentally ill. So those are the people that maybe were born with schizophrenia or some other type of psychosis and they have to be admitted in hospital. So psychiatrists begin as medical doctors and then specialize in mental health, just like gynecologists specialize in gynecology and so on yeah. um, and uh, so we are psychologists so we have a team that works at Oasis Africa and we offer services to individuals to companies so that the employees actually receive what we call um, mental wellness programs employee assistance and then also with insurance companies providing <coughs> insurance companies to provide mental health care and many of them, by the way, have included mental health in their services. And many people do not know. They wow. think, for example, a P, APA, MINET, Jubilee, only do medical. But they don't do only medical. They also offer mental health. Okay. And so if one is struggling with their marriage, they cover that. If one is struggling with a child, with stress, with whatever, they cover that. So that's what I do, Carol. Okay. Um, we stay in Nairobi and with services in Kenya and the region. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. By the way, so, in, this, in these days of telehealth, all our um, sessions are on telehealth. Oh so wow. We've been, yeah, we've been offering. <clears throat> we've been offering um, telehealth for a long time because we serve companies away from Nairobi, like imagine someone in Somalia, in DR Congo, even Nigeria. So when COVID hit us, everything now shifted to, to telehealth on Zoom, Skype, WhatsApp, yeah. telephone. Yeah, so that's what I do. Okay, fantastic. Uh, for anyone listening, you can see we're in very good hands this evening, uh, you know, to have uh, Dr. Gladys Mutti with us. She's been uh, counseling for, for many years. How, how many years has it been? I, you've been in this profession for very many years. How many years? That is, yes, three, that is. zero. That is. <laughs> For some of you listening, you probably were still in your diapers, you know, so. <laughs> I know, not even <laughs> So, Dr. Muti, uh, my question to you is, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, you've been practicing for a long time. Uh, you're an uh, expert, you know, for very many years. And, and so what I would... I uh, want to find out from you is what are the unique um, pressures that you're seeing that families or marriages that are experiencing nowadays that probably were not, you know, as prevalent uh, in your time? What, what is the unique thing? Because I'm sure the world has changed. Uh, you can see the change very clearly from your perspective. 
Uh, but there are some people who have been born into this world with all its pressures and they think that that is normal. So maybe you can explain to us, what are the unique things uh, that you have seen affecting families in these days? Well, um, there are many challenges and actually it isn't that uh, they, are, they were not there earlier on. They were there, but maybe in a different way. But currently many families are struggling with a lot of pressure. Um, now, there, there are many demands, demands on parents to do, to be, uh, do this, juggle your time, juggle your time between family, work, relatives, community, church. So there doesn't seem to be enough hours in a day for many people. And so this catches up with them because when you're juggling so much and you feel you don't have time, then you do get stressed. Actually, there's a lot of stress. Um, so that one does not seem to have enough time for anything. Yeah. Do I have enough time for my children? And so what has happened is, I was reading somewhere, is that many people have ended up because of all this juggling outsourcing in parenting. So you have this, for example, young child, I call it child, called house girl, working for you, working for me. And then because I have young children, I have to work, I have to be at church, I have to be whatever. So I download, I outsource, quote unquote, maybe actually this person is present in my house, but I'm not in touch with the children. So that becomes really a burden because then Children don't grow up right. They're not disciplined. There's no order. Like now COVID-19, chaos. So that again stresses me some more. So there's, there are so many roles. And by the way, parents try you know, do so much. And they are, many are doing well. Because even the, the, the juggling doesn't leave me time to see what I'm doing well. Yeah. And what is so yeah. Um, And yeah. then because of this, because of this, Sometimes um, the spouse may feel that the other spouse is not pulling their weight. Um, and, and so how come you're not there? How come you don't? How come? So a lot of blaming, a lot of externalizing, and, and again, little appreciation. Because people do better when you appreciate them at what you think is the little that they are doing. So there's a lot of pressure uh, in today's marriages. Now, um, beyond the pressure, you may, we may be juggling a lot, but then upon us comes incidents in life that we did not expect. Yeah. A child falls suddenly ill and have to have them admitted in hospital. And again, this is COVID-19 season. So just imagine juggling home, juggling a child admitted in hospital, juggling the fear of COVID. Um, or someone passes away. Or job loss. Yeah. We are facing uh, some companies right now are trenching. So how do you lose a job when the pressure is so much? When you have a loan, you have a mortgage, you have children in school and in a particular school, yeah. loss of job. Um, and then societal pressures. And um, when I say societal pressures is... Um, there is thinking, thinking on the role of gender. Uh, that begins to influence people. So you find many people looking for solutions online. Oh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a woman, I'm not supposed to. Uh, men are supposed to, and so on and so forth. So there's so much to juggle. Yeah. And many people find it very difficult to, to have it all holding together. I sometimes call it carol, so many balls in the air. So mm -hmm. like a juggler, yeah. Um, some fall, some do whatever, and we are not able to have our lives in order. So peace goes through the window. And when peace gets, you know, moves out of my life, then a lot of chaos sets in. Oh, so. wow. Yeah, uh, Dr. Mitty, as you talk, <laughs> yes, I, I, uh, yes I, I do see that. I, um, when you're talking about pressure, I mean, the, the pressure at work is so high. And um, uh, the pressure even to perform, you know, uh, pressure to their targets that people have to meet. 
and to fulfill uh, at the place of work. And then of course, there's the internal pressure of um, uh, just the whole thing of, you know, I should have achieved this amount. It's a very, uh, this is a world of performance, just very high performance, you know, that, that has been put on it. Would you just tell us what, what effect that is happening? I mean, I know you, you said um, there's a lot of externalization or a lot of blaming, uh, you know, you ought to, or maybe between a husband and a wife, they also place a lot of pressure on the marriage. But would you just tell us how, you know, how it's manifesting itself? Like, you know, when you have couples coming, you know, into practice, what are some of the things that are manifesting there when they come? Well, um, definitely with the pressure comes the impact of stress. And uh, so we, we are seeing many couples, individuals coming in very stressed, uh, irritable. It takes just something little to make them blow up. Yeah. And when there's yeah. some blow up in a relationship, it can go anywhere. It can even go on into name calling, um, blaming, um and even sometimes sorry to say violence and yeah. physical uh, because i sometimes say that women uh, may not have the muscles to hate someone yeah. but they have the tongue yeah. uh, so there's a lot of whiplashing when when someone angry and irritable things leave their mouth that actually hit the other person in such a way that it, one man said, it demolished me. Oh. Now, when you demolish, yeah, really, when you demolish, how do you rebuild? Because many of them, I remember one person who said, you know what, I just leave the house, take my car, drive up country, and I'm there for three days and I don't answer her phone. You know, that is an extreme. Well, this is this was before lockdown, <laughs> and yes, yes. I just just imagine now that someone is um, demasculated, as we say, a uh, shut down, and they can't go far. So because yeah. of lockdown, you may find it actually getting you may find it getting physical, uh, mm -hmm. and so violence of the mouth of the words that we say, or violence of the physical from the other gender. Um, now, what happens to children when parents, children pick their sense of security from parents' security, their sense of peace from the parents' peace. I remember um, when, I, when I was in the USA, when I finished my, my doctorate, I worked for one year in a community um, mental health clinic very busy and many of the people that came there were single mothers um, who for whatever reason were single. Now we did a study checking the level of depression among the children and the parents because the parents would come uh, go one direction to their program and the kids go to their program. So we assessed depression in the parents and depression in the children and what we found is that the more depressed um, the mother was the higher the level of depression in the child. The child yeah. Same circumstances, you know, single, stressed, struggling, but then when there is depression in the mother, there is depression in the child. The child so yeah. many of us do not know how much we impact the children by reacting to the stresses around us are not working hard to manage them and to yeah. manage ourselves. So you find then the stress gets to the children. And, um, and the, the, I, I, sometimes I remember as we are growing up, our mothers told us, when you disagree with your spouse, do not disagree and draw words in the presence of children. Yeah. Because you see, when you go and make up later, because often people make up and the smile comes back, you are not going to tell the child, okay, we made up. We made up. What did you <laughs> feel? So really, what happens is that children in a home where there is verbal or physical violence get stuck at the point where the violence was. Yeah. And they begin perceiving the world as an insecure world. 
So, um, so what I'm saying is that these stresses that people pour to us in therapy, already they have affected children in their mm -hmm. lives. And the children begin to grow in ways where they are angry yeah. inside, and many of them will not. They will be irritable, they will be wet, they will start actually, as you know in psychology, Carol, we talk of regressing, yeah. like now COVID-19, maybe there was a four-year-old who stopped uh, bedwetting. Yeah. The more there is stress in the family, then the child starts bedwetting. Then you, you now what happens? The mother punishes or father punishes the oh, child. Oh, wow. Yes. And yes. actually it was the environment, the stressful environment that is causing the child to move backwards in their developmental milestones. Yeah. So those are some of the things that are happening. Yeah. With all okay. the stress. With all the stress. Okay. Now, um, uh, I think earlier in a conversation, we had also said that uh, quite apart from the uh, stressors uh, that we are experiencing, maybe from our places of work, maybe the expectations that we even have of, of ourselves, we had also said that, you know, we are living in a global village, so to speak. <laughs> And uh, there are forces globally that are affecting us that we might not even be aware of. So maybe, you know, you can share with us what are some of the forces that are impacting us at an individual level which we might not even be aware of? And especially well, that's in a, modern yeah, mind. Yeah. Mm, that's a very, very good question. Now, whatever is affecting us from the global village begins by affecting us individually. Because... Um, we open a window, we open a window where we allow what is happening around us to affect us. Okay, take for example, perceptions. Yeah, um, so I disagreed with my spouse this morning and I'm so mad. So you know what, I go online and I'm just doing Twitter, I'm reading through Facebook, I'm checking on anger in marriages and everything. And the perceptions of someone sitting in Japan or in the US begin impacting me here in Nairobi. So yeah. take the way people vent, you know? I can even vent on Facebook. And you know, I get ideas of someone in Alaska telling me you don't have to be treated that way. Yeah. So you know, what there is is that uh, globally perceptions begin to affect me here, you know, in people are listening from uh, to, this, uh, to this conversation. So yes, indeed, global views, perceptions, um, the global, um, take for example, global understanding of roles, you know, gender roles, um, that women are not supposed to, men are not supposed to, or men are supposed to. So these things are affecting us and we need to be really careful before we adopt whatever we find whether in a magazine or online or in a conversation with someone far away, be very careful how does that faith set up here? Mm. Um, am I working, doing the best with what I have instead of looking at what I don't have because someone else thought I should have more? So yes, there is a huge impact out there um, and a lot of care is needed. Okay, to, so like to, now to, just... Yeah. Okay, just explain a little bit in terms of uh, uh, gender roles. Um, what, what is the understanding, what, what is the global um, understanding of, of the gender roles as it is right now? Well, that is, uh, uh, gender roles is, uh, has actually got to do with asking who should do what. So we are on gender roles. Um, and many of us were socialized that way that we knew what women were supposed to do, we knew what men were supposed to do in terms of roles. So confusion comes when now I'm finding that someone else is telling me you are not supposed to. Uh, I remember talking to somebody who um, went to a house somewhere to record something, you know, for the work that they, they were doing. They went in the evening and um, they found that they were recording whatever with a gentleman. And the lady of the house was sitting on the couch about seven o'clock. And 
that's a time when you should hear pots and pans, you know, in the, in the kitchen, someone making dinner. This person stayed from seven all the way to, I think, about eight that day, you know, recording uh, with, this, uh, with this gentleman. And the lady sat on the couch watching television. And of course, you could see nothing was happening about dinner in that house that day. And so at some point, uh, the gentleman paused and said, you know, um, could we, my dear, have a cup of tea? And she shot back at him, it's like, if you want cup, cups of tea, check in the fridge, maybe there's milk, I don't know. Um, and so it ended up, actually there was no dinner going on in that house that day. And uh, at some point she said, yeah, go ahead and make the food if you want. Now, so there is, there is that, we, we grew up knowing tradition that when it comes to food on the table, women actually take the lead, you know, and they don't die <laughs> taking the lead. Yeah. They're the caregivers of the family. They may be juggling work and home, but it falls in their docket to ensure that shopping has been done. They may not be the ones doing the shopping, but they lead, it's a role they, they lead. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so it's like we grew up knowing that the work of the home, the care for the home and the children falls more on the mother. She may delegate, but that's her role. The role of maybe um, thinking of where the family will be five years to come, do we have a home? Are we investing? The leadership of that role, we grew up you know, knowing it falls on the man. Okay, she engaged the woman. And even the woman, by the way, she may go ahead and even uh, Proverbs at one, say, yes, lad, advise it. She may lead in that role, but then overall, it seems that the man is a cover of the home and he ensures that there is a roof over the head of this yeah. family, together, mm -hmm. of course, with his wife. The point is, these things are getting confused, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. These roles are getting confused. So gender roles talks actually about equality um, of genders. Uh, it talks about, it advocates for the rights of, both, rights of both genders. And it seems to say there are no gender differences. You know, a man can do what a woman can do and more of it is like a woman can do what a man can do. So there's a lot of fight about gender equality. Mm -hmm. And then we have the whole issue of feminism. Femi feminism now takes it a lot higher, mm -hmm. and we start fighting for the rights. Women have rights too. And actually, it's more fighting for the rights of women than for the rights of boys and men. And then you wonder, a woman is supposed to be, uh, one of the gifts that we have as women is a nurturing role. Mm -hmm. And we not, yeah. don't just nurture yeah. girls. Yeah. We nurture both. Yeah. So where do we, when we fight for women rights, where do we leave the boy child and the father? So basically, those are some of the things that begin now to push marriages. If we are not careful what mm. we select and what we adopt. Yeah. Because the fact that when I'm shopping for a dress or for a jacket or for something or for shoes, there are so many malls and shops with this stuff. Yeah. I don't go and buy anything anywhere. I take care to select what I'm buying. Does yeah. it fit my needs? Do I need it now? Yeah. Well, what will it do for me? Can I afford it? It's everything out there, but we need to be extremely careful what doorways we open and what we allow into marriages. Okay. Because it can come and blow it apart or it can come and strengthen the marriage. So it's same as shopping, the same as serving a meal on a plate. The whole buffet is there, but I don't eat the whole buffet. I yeah. eat what I'm able to. I don't eat what does not agree with me. I take what my, my tummy can handle. Yeah. So choosing and, and adopting has to be very, very carefully done, although there are so many views out there. Okay, so what I hear you say, Dr. Mwiti, is that we need to be careful about um, the ideologies that we adopt for ourselves uh, and so on. Now, so, okay, so you talked about the gender roles and you also talked about uh, feminism, and I know that it is a very, very big thing. In fact, it's a very emotional, uh, you know, conversation. Uh, okay, so 
I know that there are one of the things that um, that, that, that feminism has has done is to say you know there's no difference between men and women. Uh, you know, in terms of their abilities of what they can do. And yes, of course, you know, women can do what men can do and, you know, men, and vice versa. But my whole question comes, and you alluded to it. Um, you see, if, um, uh, uh, what happens is that there, there is a sense of loss of identity. So if I'm talking, for example, as a woman, and, you know, I've been told all, because growing up, you know, that's the way that we grew up, where you're told, or the, the mantra was, you can do whatever a man can do, then you wonder, so what does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean? Uh, what are the unique things about, you know, being a woman? And what is the unique thing about being a man? And, and I want for us to tease it out a little bit, and for you to kind of explain, you did start by you mentioned something very uh, something there that I'd like us to zero in on, and that is, uh, woman, women. This is the nature of women, and this is the nature of men. So maybe I guess for you growing up, the the natures were a lot more defined. Like when you talk about the natural or the you know you know that kind of a thing. Maybe you can describe for us. Uh, both, you know, for both genders, what are the unique characteristics? You talked about women being natural. Probably they're the people who, you know, bring people together in a home or in relationships. Maybe you can explain a little bit more, you know, about women and also for men, so that then we can have an understanding, who are we? Because that whole feminist conversation has, you, you don't even know who you are <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you don't know what it means to be a woman. You don't know what it means to be a man. <laughs> And it's because those, that identity has been blurred and completely obscured. So women don't even know what it means to be women and men don't understand what it means to be men. So maybe you can explain that a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question because people, there's a lot of what we call, we call role confusion. And uh, as you are, you are right, Carol, it arises sometimes of, because of the way we were nurtured, the way we were brought up, the way we were socialized. So imagine a mother who was absent, and that's why, we, that's why we started saying very early on, do not outsource your parenting. A uh, mother who has been absent in the life of her growing daughter, who now is a woman in her own, her own home. So she never got socialized on what it meant to be herself. And to be herself begins, for me, all the way from creation. God created them man and woman. So God was not confused in his creation. <laughs> he created them separately, man and woman. He did not put anyone under the other, at least. So this idea of dominating women and whatever is not from God. And sometimes when people quote scripture, you know, that, oh, the Bible says uh, no woman should teach, you know, stuff like that. Um, God did not, did not put anyone under the other. He created them to be totally who they were created to be. So let's look at a man, yeah? A man created by God first. God did not make a mistake. And many men have not been socialized to realize they were created first does not make them more important or more equal than a woman. But there's a reason why God gave them that role of fast in terms of where is my family going? Yeah? Can you take the lead? And maybe they, some men grew up seeing their mothers take the lead. When now they are married, they sit back and expect their wife to take the lead. So please, men take the lead does not mean they dominate. But they ask the question, where is this family going? In my book, Parenting with Purpose and African Wisdom, I talk very much about purpose, that each child is created for a purpose. So what is a purpose? So then um, he is also created for relationship with God. So he takes his individual matching orders from the Almighty. So a man who is close to God will have God guide him into the things he needs to do. 
And so um, the, 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 the first thing people, men, do, men should do is live in a relationship with God and with enough mentors around them to actually help them to be accountable to their role as men. Men also should be inspirers of those around them. Remember the first means you inspire. You are leading the way and you are telling everyone, come on, you can do it. Inspire their wives to flourish and to do the best. Some men compete with women. I know I say, please, no woman will ever be a man any day. <laughs> so there should be no need for competition. So can they inspire the women, the daughters, the sons, and the wife in their lives to become whatever God wanted them to be? And then they live in such a way as to gain trust. Because if someone who is leading you and showing you the way does not betray you, then you'll be able to trust them and you'll be able yourself to blossom. Okay? So how can a man live in such a way that he is creating trust? How can he live in such a way that he is creating a safe, secure place in his home? Because then people will blossom you know, around him, his wife, and the children will blossom. And then, another thing men do is that they should live in such a way as to make their wives feel feminine. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, yes. Bring out the beauty, the feminine, because to me, women are like blossoming flowers. They carry the aroma of God-given beauty in them. Because from the heart, women should be beautiful. So a husband making his wife feel beautiful, commending her when she dresses well, noticing when she cooks the food well, noticing when the home is clean, and of course, helping that particular aspect to happen. So where can he help? But then he should notice whatever his wife does so that he can be able, the leading, the fast, you know, um, and then working hard, of course, is there, investing, making sure the family is fed, and not allowing other men to influence him through peer pressure. When mm -hmm. I say peer pressure, is that we are gifted differently. So maybe right now, someone can afford to drive a Prado, but I cannot afford to drive a Prado. Does not mean I'm lesser. Yeah. It means yeah. at this point in my life, what I should be driving is be happy with my Honda. So I should not go ahead and when COVID-19 opens, jump into the bank and get a loan and buy a product. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm experiencing the pressure from my peers. So basically it's cutting my cake according to what I have, cutting my dress according to the cloth that I have, and being happy and confident that if I'm doing my best, loving my family, my children, my wife, then that is what God requires me to do. And then work very hard and refrain from peer pressure. And then having um, mentors around me, having um, a team around me that helps me to be faithful to the promises that I make, both in society and in the family. Yeah. Then you go to the wife. She was created feminine sorry to say and if we remove the womanness out of a woman then the person is no longer there so for me femininity, femininity you know loving respecting actually by the way when i talked of inspiring the woman for the man the bible commands husbands love in your wives and then wives respect men do not know love from a woman who does not respect them Mm -hmm. The first thing for a woman is be feminine, respect your spouse. That is godly and it's commanded. Now, we know people say, oh, Ephesians 5 talks of only wives submitting. No, Ephesians 5 begins actually in verse 20, 21. It says, submit one to another. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say how. So it tells women how. And by the way, when it tells women how, Women are told how in three verses in Ephesians 5. Men are told love in eight verses. So there is more load on men actually 
and their wives be um, respectful. And then wives avoiding also making comparisons. I talked earlier of the tongue, yeah? Avoid making comparisons. Remember that when we married this guy, we married him because there are particular qualities in him yeah. that attracted me to him. The person has not died. They are the same people. So excite those qualities in the man through respecting him. Avoid making comparisons. Avoid making negative comments. And like I said earlier, we, someone says, a woman once said, I'm going to cut him to size. Now, you cut him to size, you are, so you end up with a man cut to size. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then, men have a lot of dreams. Because remember I said, they look ahead, maybe they are investment mind, they want to buy land, uh, they want to build. And so be considerate and don't shoot down the plants, even if you don't see where the plants are going. It's going. Yes. <laughs> someone, someone once said, uh, a, man, a man may come home and say, you know what? I'm going to buy land um, in Gong and I will build a home. You know, Gong is one of these uh, wonderful places in Nairobi. And I will... <laughs> you can't even pay the buru buru. So please, we need to be very careful that we do not say words that don't people. So when I said feminine is blossom, bloom, look beautiful, become their own, speak in a way that is going to grow up. Because many of us do to all this are becoming so, so irritable. Even the face changes with irritability. We yeah. start aging when you are still young because all the negative stress pours negative hormones into our system so yeah. we start aging early we mm. are not sleeping well you we always have the what you call the here and the here syndrome mm. my head is hurting my back i'm not available sexually to my husband um because i'm always complaining of some things. so let's be very careful so that because when we bloom and blossom as God created us, it releases health into our bones and into our system. Wow. Live as you are created. Okay, wow. Would you believe it, Dr. Mwiti? We've actually run out of time. <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping that, um, you know, we can continue this conversation. I really feel that, um, uh you know as as a as an older woman honestly you you do have so much wisdom uh I, I mean just a whole thing of who men are and who women are i mean that that is so amazing i i truly have appreciated that and so i'm going to um close this uh session um well, with prayer uh, and, uh, you know, just praying for anybody out there who is like, oh my goodness, any man out there who is like, oh my goodness, you know, I realize I never knew that these were my roles. And for the woman, oh my goodness, you know, God has really, when, when we live out our roles as men and women, it is such an enriching uh, time. It's, it, it, it really releases that health and beauty and wonder in a relationship. So as we close in prayer, maybe Dr. Muti, you can please pray. I, I can't pray when you're here, <laughs> but would you please pray for that man and even for that woman who, you know, even as you have talked, have felt they, they can sense that there's been a role reversal or even a role confusion uh, in their situation. So please pray, please pray for us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so, so much that we have had this time together, precious time. Thank you for making us men and women that's created us. Help us to thrive, to become the best that we can be. Women, Proverbs 31, giving us, gives us the profile of a thriving woman. She is free, she blossoms, she invests, she cares for her family. And then men, we have our roles. You have your roles cut off. May the Lord remind us 
Father, remind us that you made us to become great, to become successful, to bring up children, to pass on legacies. And so may the Lord encourage any man right now who is feeling discouraged to be the best he can be. Every woman listening to be beautiful, to be feminine, to be the best that she can be. Thank you for Mabuno and Mabuno Ministry. Thank you for Carol and for this program. Bless her Lord and her pastoral role. Thank you so much. May we spice our world with the beauty of our faith that makes a difference to every role God has given us to fulfill. Father, help us to leave legacies for the future. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm hoping that we can continue this conversation uh, with Dr. Mwiti for next week in terms of, uh, again, roles, uh, how to talk to one another, how to bring out the best in one another. And so until next week, uh, it's goodbye and God bless you.